Hi there, welcome back. It's been a little while since our last video, but I was preparing for you guys on this awesome course. This is a Wernstack blog, front and back, where we're gonna learn a lot of great features. Like, like and unlike post, comment, user and admin dashboard, what you see is what you get, editor, drag and drop image, where we're gonna save uh, that image in uh, Cloud Generary, for make and new validation, and so on. So in this lesson, we'll cover we'll cover the backend part, and in the second lesson, we will make the frontend part. And I hope you learn a lot. So um, if you like this video, please uh, smash the like button and subscribe. Without wasting time, let's begin. So I'm gonna guide you um, to the demo of uh, our blog. As you can see, this is our blog, okay? And um, as you can see, you see the number of likes each post um, has, okay? If you try to like a post, so it would say um, you must log in. Sure, to like a post. And if you go to the single post, you will see um, we have one comment. And to add a comment, you you will have to log in, which makes sense, right? Okay. And if you click to log in, it will redirect you to the with um sign in page. Okay. But before sign in, you should register. And we have uh, our form made with Formic and you um validation. Okay. And uh, now if we try to um, log in, okay, as a regular user, okay, it will direct us to dashboard. But the focus here is more on the post. So it's a simple dashboard, okay? I made just for you to kind of have an idea if this is your first time, okay? So um, yeah, once we uh, log in, as you can see, you can, see the post that you have already liked okay so if you click again it will unlike the post but as you can see if the heart is uh is uh red i mean you already like this post else it's empty okay so you can see also uh the number of comments each post has okay and you see the date that it was created and here this single um post as you can see we have uh three comments okay and uh once we are logged in so you can add a comment as you can see you see the comment box right and uh um, you see the comment box add your comment here okay but the comment box will appear only if you are uh, already a login and adding a comment as you can see a uh, comment added successfully um i agree okay so we have added um comment and now we want to log out because we want to log as uh, admin okay so as you can see when you log out you can you cannot see uh the post you have already like okay so makes sense now um, let's log in as um, administrator John Doe at gmail.com and adding our password. As you can see, it will direct us. So we also have data grid, okay? Uh, data grid, uh, and this is great here when you have to create a post. As you can see, it has validation. We, we made it with Formic, okay? What you see is what you get, editor, drag and drop, okay? Really great. And uh, you're gonna try to create a post. Okay, let's add lowm itsu. Okay, as you can see the drag and drop. So um, in the drag and drop, if you are trying to add an image in it, you will see the background will change and also the text. Okay, you will see that in a moment. So I'm searching the, the image. As you can see, when the image is over, it says drop here. But when you uh, release the image, okay, it will receive it. Or you can browse the image, okay? So 
great features that you can add in your own application. Well, so I'm going to choose another image. Okay. So as you can see, I drag in a, another image and try to create a post. Okay. And uh, if the post is created, we have we receive the confirmation post created. And this is how post post test. Okay. Um, posted by John Doe. And you can edit. As you can see, it appears in the form. So um, I will change the create post to edit post. Okay. So let's say post test edited. Loem is ipsu edited. And I will change um, this image. Okay. Let's uh, choose another image. Okay. When the image is over, as you can see. Okay. We change the image. And let's try to update. Like I just said, I will update this title. And try to create the post. I mean, to update the post. As you can see, post updated. As you can see in the title, post test edited. The image also is changed. As you can see, if you try to edit again, and uh, you, you already uh, see the result, okay? And also you can delete. If you delete, you have a pop-up message. Are you sure you want to delete this post? Yes. Uh, and post deleted. And also the post is disappeared. It's deleted also if you want. Okay, now let's get our hand dirty. We're gonna build our backend API. So we will build entirely, like I've just said, our backend API in this lesson, guys, for you to have the, the focus. Um, so we have an empty folder, blogman stack. Okay, and I will install um the, the front end part, npx create react app front end, and also we cd in the back end. And I will add npm init dash y. That means I don't need to confirm. It will create automatically the package JSON without questioning. Okay, now we have uh, our package JSON. Okay. And also we clear the, the console. And I will install those these packages, BigGrid, body parser, cloud generic, cookie parser. Calls, .env, express, json, what token, mongoose, morgan, don't mourn. Okay. And by the time we will be back after the installation. Okay. The installation is completed. And as you can see, this is our packages. Okay. And we have also our, our front end ready. And uh, now we're gonna create the, our first file, um, app.js, which will be our server. Okay, so we paste um, some boilerplate, express, uh, we require express, and we invoke express. Okay, mongoose, morgan, which is very useful. When you um, reach an endpoint, it will you will see which endpoint you reach, body parser, dot env, and cars. Okay, dot env um, to add our sensitive uh, data. Okay, now we paste uh, middleware. Okay, app use Morgan. Um, um, we pass the dev uh, flag. Okay, body parser. And we use, we're gonna use cookie. We use calls. Okay, because we're gonna make a um, request from the front end to the back end. Okay. And uh, we miss cookie parser. We're gonna um, require cookie parser. Cookie dash parser. Okay, so um, if this is not your first time, guys, you, you know um, how we do it. This is the, the same thing, okay? But we're gonna address our code um, according to our needs. Okay, but the structure is the same. Okay, and now we uh, create a variable port. Okay, process that env port because we're gonna access the the dot env file that we have just created, and we're gonna um, use uh, our backend port um, nine thousand. And now we uh, add app that listen um, 
we pass the port and we add a callback just um, so we can know um, what's going on. And we're going to say we um, add backtick because we're going to add a variable. Server is running on port. And um, as you can see, template string port. Okay. So um, for now, that's it um, for the beginning of our configuration. And now we're going to add a script. Okay. Because we're gonna add uh, node mon. Each time um, we make a change in our backend, it will restart our server automatically, which is great. So you already know that, guys, for some of you that already member of this channel. Okay, start. Okay, node mon. We're gonna node mon gonna find the file app.js. Okay, and now let's run npm start. Okay, so it's gonna want this file and we're gonna have uh, um, the message, okay, if our backend is working. As you can see, server warning on port 9000. And now we have to create an account. I mean, if you don't have an account in uh, um, uh, MongoDB, so we're gonna create a new project. Okay, if you don't have an account, it's free. You can create um, an account. Okay, this is really simple. And now we're gonna um, give our project a name, blog learn project. Okay, um, YT for YouTube. Okay, I need to add members. Okay, let's create a project. Okay, now we're gonna create a database inside the project. So build a database. As you can see, we have M10. You see zero zero um, eight dollar uh, hour, and we're gonna choose the free option, obviously, and we're gonna name our um, uh, database blog Mern, um DB. And as you can see, we have using the free. Okay, the free tier and create it. So it gives us um, a default username. So we're gonna add our custom username. Okay, let's say we're gonna name um, ADM and we're gonna um, accept the password and create the user. After that, you need to have, uh, you need to add uh, um, access for IP address. We're gonna add all, but if you are on the production you can add your custom ip address okay and after the configuration you can close finish okay go to database okay so now we're gonna click on connect because we're gonna grab our link so we have different options here and we're gonna choose compass and here let's copy our link okay to access our database so we are finished so with the configuration from the mogodb side and now we're gonna inside our env we're gonna paste um our url and you see password you should remove the password to add um the one that you um that they give you or that you choose to have okay you replace that and add your password okay and now we create the variable port, I mean 9,000, I mean the constant. Okay, after that, we're gonna add the connection to our database. So mongoose.connect, okay, this database, as you can see, process.env, mongoose.connect, connect, return a promise. That's why we have that then and catch the promise. But we have a little error and we're gonna um, fix that. Mongo pass invalid connection string. So we already know what it is. It should not have a space. And we'll move the space. And now let's um, save again. As you can see, let's see. Server warning on port. Okay, DB connected. So everything is fine. And now I'm going to open. Uh, okay. 
uh, or not a console, CD in backend, and we're gonna create a directory routes. So we're gonna structure our app, okay? So after that, another folder, controllers, okay? So because um, we are using MVC pattern, okay? MVC pattern is a software architecture and we add uh, our utils um, folder. And create a model folder. Okay. So we miss a um, middleware. Okay, now we have our structure, okay, and um, we clear the console, okay, and now we're gonna um, go inside your chills. We're gonna create, uh, we're gonna handle our custom error, okay. So we add uh, a file uh, inside your chills named error that, um, error response.js, and now we instantiate um, error response, um, um, not instant shit, we, um, I mean, class error response extends error from the, uh, the JS error, okay? So, constructor, um, code status, okay? And we receive the, uh, this code, this, that code status, code status, okay? And uh, we will need this um, error response so that we can uh, have our custom error message, okay? And we go inside middleware, touch, um, we add another file name error.js because we're gonna um, use the file that we have just created to build our custom error response. We already did that in um, other series, okay? but uh, I have to uh, do it again, just since this is um, your first time I'm seeing that. Okay, now we bring our um, custom error response. Okay, now um, const error handler. So we will have error, uh, request response, and next, Okay, this will be in our function. And to save you some time, guys, guys, so let error. So we're gonna spread the error. Error that message equal error that message. So if we have a cast error, um that means uh with us not found, and we're gonna send the message. Remember it has message and the status code, the code status, okay. If this is a duplicate value, okay, we receive this code. So we're gonna uh, throw error, duplicate field value, and we're gonna pass the, the message, okay? And if we have a validation error, we will uh, we will have to print each error, okay? One at a time. And, um, okay, then we're gonna send the status, success false, and error. We're gonna pass the error. If not, we're gonna uh, have uh, server error and we need to I mean export in order to use it in other files um, in our application okay we have a typo so it should be response res and now um, one step up so we're gonna jump inside the Folder, um, the models folder. We're gonna create um, our first uh, model, user model. Okay, in it we will bring um, um, mongoose. Okay, we'll bring mongoose, mongoose so that we can create our model. Cause mongoose. Um, require mongoose and cons user um, schema okay so no um, mongoose okay as you can see this mongoose this cons mongoose new mongoose 
that um, schema and we're gonna open and close um, curly braces okay so we're gonna export just to not forget module that exports equal um yeah equal module like equal um mongoose sorry that model open and close so we're gonna name it user and we're gonna receive the user schema okay and uh, in between we're gonna add our schema we're gonna have a name okay and add a, we add a validation from the model required okay email um we add a custom message unique true the email should be unique okay and the password should match okay now um the the it should must match sorry these characters in the email and our role uh, the default is a user and uh we're gonna see uh um in some um in some uh, minutes later timestamp true in order to add created add and other updated add automatically okay we save so no error so we're gonna add capital u okay and now i'm gonna bring bequit because we want to encrypt our password okay now to encrypt the password so as you can see we add in the user schema a custom um that pre as you can see uh used user schema that pre it's before saving the password okay if the password is not changed the next else we're gonna encrypt the password okay so after that we want to um compare when a user is signed in we want to compare if the password is in thread is uh, the one that match uh, the one that save in the uh, database okay so this is how to to do this okay so the password the entered password with the current password that we have in the uh, database and after that we're gonna um we have to when a user is sign in we're gonna generate a token for that we're gonna use json web token which is a very popular package okay now we add a custom method on user schema when you add a custom method like a compare password you, you, this one will be get jwt token okay and this is how to um add uh, uh, to generate the token it will have the user id okay and we pass process that env jwt secret and the expired expired date will be one hour and jwt secret we will pass gibberish okay it could be anything okay so um yeah so um that's it so after that um we're gonna click the console go inside routes so first of all we're gonna add uh, uh off routes i mean to sign in log um sign in sign up um log out um user profile okay so we're gonna bring express Okay, and also we invoke um as you can see const wilder express that wilder okay like so with capital r in the wilder and now comment of routes So we're gonna have uh, forward slash API forward slash sign up and wilder 
that post okay and it will be sign up and sign up controller okay but we don't have this controller yet we're gonna create it up soon and now we need to export i mean the water module that exports equal water so that we can use it in other files okay and now let's create the controller okay so so we need to create this file one step up and inside controllers folder We're gonna create a uh, off controller. Okay, so this will be the sign up controller. So we create um, a variable name user with capital U so that we can win the model, okay? So that we can uh, make the difference between, um, uh, you, you will see in a while if this is your first time, um, cons user required um, from the model, the user model. And we, we will also um, uh, include the error response whenever we will use it whenever we need it okay we both from your chills and our response and now exports that sign up so this name sign up equal we're gonna use um async await this will be an our function request response x Okay, um, seems like we have a typo, exports, okay, so um, as you can see, cons email, we're going to receive the email from the request body, and we're going to test if um, we have an email, um, the same email in our database, if the email is, exists. So we would say um, email already exists, I mean, unauthorized 400, okay? Else we will create the user, I mean, const user, um, uh, await, um, you, you see the user model with capital U, create, I mean, we see request that body, and we send a response in the front end, okay? And now we need to bring a sign up controller, as you can see, auto imported. And we will one step up, okay uh, and save okay so after that we need to bring this out in our main app okay so import um routes so we will have our different routes imported here for now we have only one and cause of um uh, of route Okay, of routes um, equal require. Okay, dot for slash. Okay, so inside the routes folder, and we have only one of routes, and that's it. And after that, we need to pass it as um, a middleware as route middleware okay so middleware is something that you add in between okay so this is the concept this will be what middleware adding our comment what's middleware and we will use um oops um 
app that you use this is how, um, where you will add the prefix to your api okay forward slash api i mean any word that we have created for off words will we have a prefix of um, forward slash api and now we pass the off words and save and uh before saving we have to add uh, the your error we we have to bring error here so that our app can use our custom errors so we're gonna bring our custom error here Okay, in the middle of folder, and we receive the error. And after that, we will use, uh, we'll add error middleware. Okay, that means each time we have an error in our application, so um, it would take, I mean, the shape of our custom errors. You got it. So app that use not user app that use we passing the error handler. I mean now we are using our custom error. Okay, as you can see, we have the class of error response and uh, also we have our custom error message. Okay, and now we save. No errors. DB connected. And now we will um, create our first endpoint. Okay, but I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna testing for you guys all the endpoints to save you some time. But you need to test each endpoint. Okay, that you created because I already made this project. I know it's working, but for you, each endpoint that you you are created, you should test it. Okay, so we add a folder blog Marine API. Um, yt for youtube we create another folder for user and we're gonna have a sign up um, this will be post request and our port is 9000 if you remember port slash api because we add this prefix and now app that js and sign up okay and after that body wow and uh, json so open and close curly braces, and we're gonna add uh, this JSON. Okay, name John Doe, email John Doe at gmail.com, password Doe, and all this will be admin. And let's send our request. As you can see, um, we have successfully created a new user. This is an admin user. After that, I will create a regular user. For the regular user, I don't need to pass the wall because by default, the wall is a user. You got the idea. And um, the password is man. Okay. And the name, um, let's say Peter um, uh, Holloway. Okay. And let's only add Peter and now let's try to to send the request and as you can see the wall is by default a user it's a regular user guys so we have successfully created a regular user and an admin user now let's go back in our code editor we're gonna create the sign in um, right now okay we just duplicate on the first one controller and we're gonna uh address our code okay we will move everything in between we're gonna add again try catch block okay and we're gonna receive when we're gonna sign in email and password from the request body okay 
this is possible with body parser and now we're gonna add some validation so if we don't receive an email please add an email if you don't receive email from the request body we're gonna send um, error message if we don't receive password we're gonna send an error message okay and also we're gonna check uh, user email so const user await user model that find one email if we don't find this email in our database when you a user try to sign in we would say invalid credentials okay or not otherwise so this is the status code and we're gonna check if the password match as you can see we have created in, in our model the compare password um, method okay this is here here compare password okay so um if the password is not match the one that is in the database so we're gonna also send an error um invalid credentials okay so let's uh let's catch our error And now, if um, the user um, all this check um, um, are passed, okay, so we'll send, we'll generate the token, okay. We're gonna name it uh, custom method send token response. We're gonna pass parameters like user. We already have user in this uh, controller, and we're gonna pass the code status and the response that we receive from this controller. Okay, and now let's create this uh, custom method, const send token response. Okay, we're gonna use um, async await. And now, as you can see, we receive um, the user because we have two parameters. Okay, in our method, first one user, second one is the code status. As you can see, uh, if everything is good, we're gonna have a successful response, 200. And res we're gonna receive the res from this controller okay from the controller above okay and create a variable name token await user okay we receive the user from the parameter user that get a gwt uh, token so let's verify again we're gonna copy our method from our model, okay? And we paste it here. So when the user is signing in, we're gonna generate a token, okay, from JSON Web Token. And we're gonna send the status code, okay? We're gonna receive the code status. Okay, we already have this in, in the parameter. And we will have our cookie. Our cookie name will, will be token. Okay. And the expired date will be one hour. Okay. Your expired date should be the same. Your expired token should be the same with the cookie expiration. Okay. If you set one hour for token, one hour also for cookie. Okay. And now we send a response. So here we're gonna only send only necessary information in the front end. So we send um, ID, okay, from, that we grab from this this one user, okay. We send the ID and we send the role, okay. So we're gonna see um, uh, when we go there. We're gonna understand better if this is your first time seeing that. Okay, so now we're gonna bring this controller. This will be sign in. And also we'll bring this controller in the of what, okay, auto imported. Okay, no errors.
So we need to add um, um, some other methods. So this time we're gonna add logout features. Okay, like I've already told you, the course the uh, is uh, the focus is more on the is more on uh, is more about um, the blog to to teach you some features. So um, if you want to see a complete um, West API for the user mode, for the user, you can watch how other other um, tutorial like um, job portal etc. We have many in this channel okay to log out so we're gonna clear cookie okay res that clear cookie remember we named the cookie token and when we clear the cookie we're gonna clear this name click cookie and when we clear the cookie the user will be um log out, log out because the, the info will not available anymore in the browser Okay, success true, and we're gonna send a message so that we know what's going on. Logged out. And we save. After that, we're gonna bring this controller in um, our off routes so that we can use it. Okay, we add logout. This will be our route, and also this will be a get request. And we're gonna send our endpoint logout and logout on controller that we're gonna bring here. And as you can see, auto import it. So we cleared the console a little bit so that you can see what we are doing. And we're gonna jump inside the middleware. Okay. We're gonna create a middleware name um, off.js because we're gonna add some custom some custom middleware. I mean middleware for uh, when a user should be authenticated when accessing a, a route and also a middleware for admin if a user um, whether or not a user can access an admin route okay and now we bring uh, JWT from JSON Web Token so we name it JWT okay to make sense um, and we're gonna require the, um, I mean, uh, the user from the user model. And uh, after that, so we're gonna check if the user is authenticated. I mean, when we want to protect a route in our backend, we check if the user is authenticated. Well, now um, when the cookie is generated, we're gonna extract the cookie. Remember, it named token. We're gonna extract the cookie from the request cookies. So you know we we are using middleware cookie parser, and also we name our um, cookie token. Okay, and now we're gonna um, extract the token from the request cookies. Okay, this is from um, Cookie Parser. And now, if we don't find the token, so we're gonna say you must log in and we, we're gonna send uh, 401. Okay, I mean, I forget um, 400 guys is bad request, 401 is unauthorized. Um, uh, uh, sometimes, also, even you have sometimes, sometimes you will uh, confuse. Um, well, okay, so um, decoded JSON JWT verify to verify the token that we receive, and we're gonna verify with the process that env JWT uh, secret, and also we're gonna add, okay, the the request that user, okay, so request that user you will find um, 
this is one that we are going to use um, in our middleware. So we will see if this is not your first time, you know um, uh, how we do it. Okay. And for admin, uh, request that user that role. Okay. If this is a user, as you can see in the model, the default is a user. Okay. So if the role is a, a user, so for an admin what we're gonna say uh, access denied, you must be an admin for one, one otherwise, and don't forget for 100 bad requests. Okay, now we will display the user profile. And we're gonna use uh, async await. And now we don't need this line. And for the user profile, we're gonna create a variable name user await user model find by id request that user that id okay in the in the middleware as you can see we have this request that user so we're gonna grab it in the middleware you will see that in a moment okay request that user that id if a user is already logged in it will have request that user that id you get it and we don't send the password okay select dash um, as you can see here, password, and also we send uh, the response in the front end. And this what will be forward slash API, me. Oops, uh, so we will uh, grab the controller name. Okay, user profile. Okay, and we import, auto imported. But remember to see your profile, you should be authenticated. Okay, so we'll, we will have to bring the is authenticated uh, in the where. And we're gonna, we're gonna bring it. Okay. So after that, we're gonna upload the image in the Cloudinary. So this is free. After creating your account, you will log in. So as you can see, it has uh, some popular uh, programming language, but I'm using Node.js. So I will grab my configuration. So you will use yours. So use mine, use yours. Okay. So we're gonna CD inside utils folder and create a file named cloudgenery.js. Okay, so as you can see, we paste and we export cloudgenery so that we can use it. Okay, so not here in the package.json. As you can see, we have a cloudgenery package installed. And uh, now we add it in our .env. So this is where you add your sensitive data. Okay. Cloud name, API key, API secret. Okay. All of these you just copy, but I have added in the uh, cloud name, cloud key in the cloud key secret in the .env file, just to protect uh, our sensitive data. Okay, so after that, we create the post model in the models folder. Again, we're gonna bring mongoose because anytime we create a model, we bring mongoose. So also, I will bring the object ID when you, you wanna make relation with um, document, 
okay it's like when you just see that when you want to make relation um table relationship like in uh, um mysql for example or relational database well so const post schema no mongoose that schema okay so open and close calibrates but i will paste um some um code for you guys and i will explain it so we'll have in the post the title we have our custom message the title is required the content content is required posted by as you can see posted by will be uh we will have relationship between post and user okay it should be object id this one okay posted by each time someone posts a post we will know exactly who post the post who create the post it's, this is what it says and also we have the comments array we have likes array okay comments i mean likes will have uh, when you like we will grab your id and you are online we will um uh, delete your id make sense okay and uh, for comments you see it's an array of objects which has text created and posted posted by we will know also who comment this post right makes sense and now uh module that exports so that we can use it in our um, file uh mongoose that model so this will be post and after that we will receive the the post schema and also the image as you can see it has url and public id url public id this will come from cloud generic so you will see that when we get there um in a, in a in a while okay so inside what folder we we'll create post route also one step up we'll go inside the um, controller controllers folder we'll also create post controller okay now we will um uh in i mean uh will require a cloud generic okay because we're gonna upload image in cloud generic and now remember we have our configuration in utils and we're gonna bring the cloud generic file and also we're gonna bring the post model we'll create the const post with capital so that we can uh, uh make the difference um yeah with the post and the uh, and the uh, post with capital r capital p sorry and we bring um error response we're gonna use it whenever we need it So we will create a post. So exports, okay. The controller name will be create post. Then we're gonna use async await, quest, response, next.
okay um to create a post we will only need the title content and image okay because posted by will will be you, you will see that a, uh, in a moment okay and we open try catch block um first of all we're gonna upload the the image in cloud january so i added the comment const result await cloud january that we receive here that uploader that upload this is from the mongodb documentation and the name will be image that we receive from the request body and the folder will be the folder name will be post if we don't have this folder names it will create it automatically the width will be um 12 um thousand and corp scale okay so after uploading the image so in the result so we'll we can create the post cons post await post model that create open and close curly braces as you can see in the image we have urls and public id and as you can see public id and url okay colon result that public id public id we will receive it from the um cloud generally and also url result that secure underscore url that we will receive from the cloud generally when we upload an image okay and we will save those data in our mongodb database okay after that we send uh, uh, a response okay 201 i mean created and uh, in our catch block if you want you can um if you have an error you can add it in the console also we add next error and we save we should not any errors we should not have i should say so in the wild post what so we bring express cons water like so and we need to export okay in order to use it in other files And now we will um, add all the blog routes, okay? Because in this lesson, uh, this tutorial is more about the blog to learn some good features. Now we want to create um, a post. Okay, so we bring uh, uh, the create post controller one step up. Uh, okay, but also to create a post, you see posted by, we, we will have to grab the request user that ID. We'll have only request that user that ID if a user is authenticated. So we will need to pass uh, to bring is authenticated middleware. And after that, to create a post, you should be an admin user. We will bring um, is admin middleware. Make sense? Okay, and add comma, and uh, let's say okay. So we should have no errors. Okay, same way we import um, the off words, we need to bring the post route. Require. Okay. Um, dot port slash routes. And post route. Also, we will need to bring. Um, Post route here, post route middleware. So any word from post route will have a prefix of forward slash API. Okay, and we save. We should not have um, any error. Okay, no errors. Um. 
okay so we're gonna con continue creating our controllers or post and what we will have now we will uh, show all the posts okay so we will move everything so that we can have full control so show post okay and now const post uh, with with s okay post that fine we're gonna sort i mean by the last created the last post created and we're gonna populate mean we're gonna add inside our post um the one that uh post the, the this um uh this post okay as you can see posted by will receive uh um, in i can say that posted by is the relationship between um blog and user model okay so that we will know who post um who created the post okay after that we send uh, the successful we send the response and uh, we add error next error okay and we save Now we will have a, a get request. Show post. Okay. So after that, we will have another controller this time. We will have to show single post. Show single post will have only to change this part, okay? find uh, post model find by id request params that id we will receive from the we'll see where we, it's come from comment that posted by okay as you can see comment it is an array of object okay comment that posted by and as you can see the reference is the user model and the user model has the name okay uh, but even you don't get you don't get it with some practice you will then uh, it's totally fine but with some practice you will uh, understand better okay and now as you can see we put the wap so for slash post for slash column id so this is where we will grab the id that we add uh, uh that we have just added okay request param that id request params okay so another controller So we're going to delete the post. Delete the post. So we will change uh, only this part. So when we are deleting uh, a post, you should delete the, the post image in the cloud generally. And after that, you delete the post in mongodb so for now to know which post that we are dealing we create a new variable named current post i mean the actual post that we want to delete 
post model for find bar ID, request bar answer ID. Um, so now we have the current post. When we have the current post, we can have the image ID, cons image ID, okay, delete post image from in ordinary, current post, post that image that public ID. So where I get this? So let's check in the model. So as you can see in the uh, model, um, in the post model, we have image that where image URL and public ID. So this is where we grab the image and public ID. And if the image exists, so we're gonna destroy. Okay, we need to add this condition because if not, if the if the image is not exist, you try to delete it, it will work, break um, your application. Okay, so after we delete the image, we want to delete also the post in uh, the MongoDB database. Okay, find post find by ID and remove. We grab the ID and we send the response. Post deleted. And now we're gonna bring um, this uh, post um, in uh, here. Duplicate this one. So this will be a uh, delete. Delete forward slash post. And delete post. We bring controller, delete post controller. And uh, you should be an admin user to delete a post, okay? After that, we'll have to update the post. So I will remove everything so that I have a clean space to work. Now to update the post, we will need to update the title or the title or the content or the image we will receive all these uh, things from the request body. And now we will have the same thing. We will have to deal with the current post we want to update. Okay, makes sense. And after that, we will have to build our object data. Okay, we create a variable named data. And we, this is an object, title, content, image, the same way that we have the name um, exists in the model. And we will receive the title, the content, the image, okay, from the request body. If not, it will be populated with the current uh, title, current post, current content, and, and current image. And now we want to, when you want to modify a post, uh, this not means you want necessarily to change an image, okay? To do so, we're gonna uh, modify the post image conditionally. Okay? So if the post image um, is not empty, Okay, so if uh, we receive something, if we receive a new image in the request body, we will modify it, uh, that image. If not, we will skip this step, right? And now, cons image, current post, uh, that image at public ID, I've, I've already showed you. So, if not empty, if we receive an image, that means we want to uh, change that image. Uh, for now, the method you're gonna uh, delete that image, the current image in the cloud generally, if the this image exists, okay. And uh, after deleting, if exists, 
we're gonna upload a new one the new one that we receive um, from the request body okay so for the post with the quote scale so we have added a new page okay remember when we have a new image so you see the data object don't have image so if we receive an image we're gonna add the, the image property to the data object really straightforward guys so okay so we're gonna add the image property to the data object and uh, after that we will have our create a new variable name post update await post find by id and update request pan that id data this data object okay and uh no true this is to return the newly updated post Okay, and we send the response, uh, the result of the post that we update. Okay, and we pass the, we handle our uh, catch block error. Okay, now this will be a put request to update, and we'll have update for slash post and the ID of the post. And we need to bring the update post um, controller. As you can see, uh, let's say auto imported. And now we're gonna add other useful feature. We're gonna add comment. We're gonna create a middleware, um, not a middleware, a controller name, add comment. And const comment uh, from the request body. So we're gonna create this comment. Uh, uh, you will see when we get there in the front end part okay so don't worry about it um so here what we are going to say um const post equal await because we are using a await the post model that um you will have to use find by id and update Find by ID on update receive um, three parameters. First of all, we'll receive the ID of the post. Also, you will receive the data you want to update. This time we'll open calibrases. So add comment. We're gonna use operator like dollar sign um, push. Okay, dollar sign push, colon, calibrases. Uh, comments okay colon calibrates again text colon comment this comment from the request body that we received now you can say where did i find this comment okay so we're gonna push remember comments is an array of objects okay so uh, we're gonna push inside the 
commit. This is how to read it. We're gonna push inside the comments array. We're gonna push uh, the text, okay, and post it by. Post it by, you see, request that user.id. So a user should be logged in in order to have this request that user.id. Okay, and now let's verify in the uh, post model. Um, as you can see, comment is an array of objects, okay, and it has text, etc. Okay, and this posted by, you see text, okay, you see comments, array of objects, and text we're gonna receive from the request body. Posted by is the relationship between uh, post model and user model, and a user should be logged in in order to have, uh, in order for us to grab uh, the user ID so that we know which user uh, uh, add uh, the comment. Okay, and the third parameter will be uh, open and close curly braces new true. After that, we will send uh, the response in the um, we'll send the response so now so that we know what's going on. Okay. And after that, we end all our error. Okay, and uh, so we this will be also a put request, same thing. I will add a comment this time. Uh, it's not necessary to be uh, an admin user. Okay, add comment uh, controller. We're gonna bring it and auto import it. Okay. So after that, we have uh, two last um, controller. This will be like and uh, unlike post to wrap um, this backend API. Add like. So we'll name it add like. Okay. So the only thing we will change, I mean, let me, uh, I will remove this entire object just for you to see a uh, clear, um, uh, to see clearly. Open and close curly braces, add like. This time we will use an operator, MongoDB operator. Add to set, add to set is the same thing with push, but the difference is add to set will not add duplicate ID. Okay, it will add unique ID, unique user ID. So open and close curly braces, likes is an um, the add to set is like push, um, push inside likes, um, um, inside the likes array of objects. Okay, the IDs. Okay, so uh, this is what it says. And the third parameter will be no true. Okay, and now we need to bring um uh we need to bring add like okay in the route. We duplicate this line. This will be also put request, and we'll name it add like. Okay, we made we made our endpoint simple. Okay, so that anyone can understand. And we bring add like um, controller, auto import it and save. And uh, our last one. Now we move likes. Okay. So if we can add like, we can also remove like. So the only thing we will change, remove like, the only thing that we will change because this is already perfect, we will add another operator to remove the ID and the operator will be um, pool, okay? The last sign pool. It will remove 
the current user ID. Okay, if you the user already like a post, when you will hit that endpoint, it will remove uh, the user like from the likes array. And okay, so we add uh, the what will be remove like okay post id and now we move like okay and uh we save so um guys um that was uh, it um for this lesson so we finish with our um backend uh, api so i hope you learn a lot okay especially for beginners or if you are um or uh, general developer, even uh, uh, middleware, um, not middleware, um, uh, mid-level uh, developer, so you, can, so you can still learn anything at any time. Okay, guys, so if you have questions, please uh, drop them in the comment section. If you like this video, please do, la do leave a, a thumbs up. This is to encourage me and share it with your friends. Um, so that more users, more uh, people can watch our video. With that being said, I will uh, find you again in the front end part. Okay, uh, this is two part in the front end part. The next video. Okay. So with that being said, thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.